All right, welcome everybody to the pen. Today I have Paul Fletcher with me, former teammate at UT. And uh, Paul has coached and been there and done that. And so trying to get some some uh, wisdom from him as well. Uh, Paul, thanks for joining on, man. Obviously, I love it. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, no Enjoy. worries. Yeah. So you're up in Knoxville today, huh? Up in Knoxville, playing a tournament, brought my team up, always. Any chance I can get back on campus and, and promote the UT, I will, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that campus has changed so much over the last, oh. what, 30, you know what I mean, man? I, I went right. back for the first Thank time you. in like, the first time in like 25, 30 years, the other, you know, to go to the football game. I was like, what? Right. Yeah. Way different. Way different. That field, I try and explain to guys all the time. It didn't look like this when I played here. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only fans we had were the Pikes up on the hill. Right, you know, that's up their, on the hill. Yeah. The fraternity right. house, man. Those are, those are the only uh, guys that kind of gave us love back in the day. So, yeah, yeah lots of change, man. Right? Big changes. Yeah. Looks it's beautiful up here now, though. So, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. They've done a great job. So, you've got you've got your, uh, what is it, 16, 16 and under team? Or you're 15 and under, but you're playing yeah. in a 16 and under league. Tournament, right? Yeah, play, playing in a 16U tournament, I have a 15U team. Um, I also do 11U team. And this past year, I coached in a college called Georgia Gwinnett. It's an NAIA school. Uh -huh. Got it. And so uh, you went to UT 91, 92? Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what went I thought. To, uh, yeah, went to JUCO, then to UT two years, and then played for the Royals. White Sox and Pirates. Cool. And then uh, you grew up where? I grew up in Alpharetta, Georgia. Okay. <laughs> right north. It's a suburb north of Atlanta, um, about 20, 30 miles. Um, played at a school called Milton High School. Got drafted by out of there. Um, decided to go to the JUCO based on some things they wanted. Um, felt it was better for me. And went and ended up at Tennessee and beyond. So, I mean, it worked out pretty good for me growing up, playing ball and how the system worked. So, yeah. Did you, uh, when you were growing up, were you typical, like, you know, I'm going to play baseball in little league and you kind of did the same, you know, what, what was your, what was your childhood like with its sports? Um, so I played them all baseball. I think, heck, I even played soccer, um, football basketball i did most sports right growing up yep. uh, small com small community so mm -hmm. we all played together um you know doing things there growing up in in that small area and um got as i got older kind of i mean i still played all three all the way through high school most of high school um i, I think when baseball became more prevalent for me i decided to not do basketball and um, spend that time, I would go to camps or, you know, we didn't have all the lessons in the showcases, but I would go do some camps and just work out and get ready for baseball. Yeah. And, and what was that, your junior year or your sophomore Yeah, year? my junior year, I really, um, it's funny, I went to, it used to be called Doyle Brothers Camps down in Florida. Okay. Three brothers, yep. Denny Blake, and that all played in the big leagues and they held a big camp every Christmas and went down there and coach from Treveca in Nashville um, was the first coach to talk to me. And then I had a scout from Oakland. I threw it a game and he was like, we think you have a shot. And my dad and I started talking about it and said, yeah, maybe it's time to start thinking about really being serious about baseball. Um, had a couple of good years in high school and was the area pitcher of the year and yeah, the, so the Red Sox drafted me. They said, we're really not wanting to offer a contract. We want you to go to this junior college and see if you can develop kind of that, you know, draft and follow they had. And uh, I, so I said, okay, went and did that. And uh, um, next thing I know, I was doing really well. And they were like, we weren't expecting that. We're going to let you go back in the draft. We don't have that kind of money for this and this. And next thing I know, I was – up here at Tennessee, Coach Del Monaco offered me a nice deal, and um, I played for a USA team for JUCO players. Oh, cool! Um, yeah, it was kind of neat, and we went down to Cuba and played. Uh, did oh, a nice. tournament down there. 
really interesting and fun. Yeah. And then came up here and every time Rod handed me a baseball, I went out and pitched, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> No, it's we, different, you know. Back back then, there wasn't pitch counts, right? They didn't pitch count you, uh, and I was not a control pitcher, right? So gotcha, gotcha, I, yeah. I always threw like Tuesday. Yeah, I threw on Tuesday or Wednesday, and it was not three or four innings and get your work and get out. It was deep, you know, no seven, eight, nine game. inning games. You pitched them, yeah, and uh, and then I threw the seven inning game on Saturdays. And a couple times, if I was still feeling all right, I'd come in relief or be like an opener on Sunday and start a game. You know, I kind of, here it is, go throw. I'm, yeah, yeah. Do it. So, different, different mentality, different, man. Different, different age, different time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Now, so, you, now you rarely see a guy go know, a complete game. Oh, yeah. I, I would say, cause so, after I got done playing, I scouted, coached in the Atlantic League, which is a independent league with mostly double AA, A, triple A, some big league experienced players. And they're like five and dive now, right? They five and six, and that's about the limit on starters. And now you've got so specific roles and guys who I'm the sixth inning guy, I'm the seventh inning guy, I'm a bridge guy, I'm a I'm a closer, I'm a back end, I'm a specialist, you know. They've Baseball has made so many different jobs player wise at the big league level. It's, you know, these pitchers, it's few and far between that go CGs anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange, man. I, yeah. you know, I, you, you just grew up either, you, either you started the game or you finished the game. One of the two, that was it. Um, right. Yeah. Right? If, yeah. You had, if you was... needed to get some midweek workout in, you pitched in the middle of a game, you know, during the week. Uh, so big, a lot of change, a lot of arm maintenance and, and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, it's probably, it's probably good, I think to a degree, but I think, you know, there's, it seems to be a little bit of like baby into, to the arms, uh, that, that I don't know. I mean, I, I would throw 120 pitch games, you know, yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I threw that a lot and. I knock on wood. I never had any arm troubles when I played, uh, even through pro ball. Um, no, no arm injuries, no surgeries, no nothing on my arm. And I mean, they have everything they have nowadays for these guys and we give it to them at our college. And yet we still, you know, we have all the rap Soto and the technology and the, the training and the water balls and the bands and the drive line and the heavy balls and the, this and that. And, we still are getting guys with blowouts and, you know, they're doing it at, at way less innings than guys used to pitch. And, you know, I always talk, go back to Mazzoni with the parades. Those guys threw every day and you talk about three hall of famers and Cy Young winner winners and everything that never had arm issues and just threw a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, there's a lot of different philosophies out there. It just is, uh, you know, everyone's got their own, but I do think you're right. These guys are babied so much with their arms, with pitch counts and, and what we do that they get. So uh, they get into that routine of uh, I'm at 60 pitches. I'm done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I, 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 I kind of don't know what to think about it because I mean, I, I, I want to even lend it to genetics a little bit too. Right. I mean, you know, some guys sure. just don't get hurt, you know, and then some guys get hurt all the time. You know, you, you, I remember we, we had a couple of guys on our team that would throw, you know, really hard. And you're just like, man, these guys are going to dominate. But they just ha they'd have an arm issue, you know, every other time they threw the ball. Right. So, so it's strange, man. Right. It's hard to figure out. There's really no formula to it. You know, it's just weird. Um, yeah. But uh, so what what's uh, you know, I, I know you, you kind of we kind of blew through what you did after you finished playing, but you, you got a really interesting track. And I know you, you know, you finished playing ball with uh, when, yeah. was your when was your last year playing pro ball? So 90, 97 was my last year pro ball. I went to camp with the Pirates, got released out of camp. Um, I got a job, actually. It's funny. I got a job in the Frontier League. Um, which was an independent league um, coaching and was in Illinois. Um, and I was a pitching coach for a couple of years there. 
and we won the league. I had a couple guys come through there. Jason Samatachi ended up pitching for a long time in the big leagues. Yeah. Um, and some other guys that made it. David Forrest, the current uh, general manager for the Oakland A's. Um, he played for us on that team. Uh, wow. Steve Barningham, who's in charge of international scouting for the Mets, he played on that team. It, Darren Bush, who's the Oakland A's, one of their big league hitting coaches. It's funny. You have this little independent league, and yet you have these guys, and they were all, you know, there's a lot of them still in professional baseball um, yeah. at high-level jobs, right? Um, and then I did that for a couple of years, and then I managed in that league. And then a friend of mine got me – he had got me an interview with the Padres. And they had a guy here in the area at the time in Atlanta. And uh, so I helped him for a couple of years. And then he left. And I took over and did it for – did scouting. Um, and the Padres sent me to the MLB scouting. They have a, a program, right, to teach you how to scout players. Um, and they, they sent me to that. and. Uh, I guess I did well enough that they liked me and gave me a full-time job. And so I did that for the Padres for a while. Um, we went out to Texas and it just got to be too much. Uh, my son was born, came back to Atlanta and coached high school. Um, did that for a while on some travel ball. In the meantime was um, scouting, working like as an associate for the Phillies and the Mets and the Orioles and some teams and, um, then I got back into coaching with the Atlantic League. Um, again, independent league. You hear a lot about it. Um, they try all the rules out for MLB. All these speed up. Speed oh, plot. that's right. Okay. Yeah, all that. We had it first. And uh, it, it was interesting. You know, we tried it. The the robot ump. We had right, the, the robot right. ump. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Frank Viola was a pitching coach against and won when they first introduced it. He was a pitching coach for the team we were playing. And in consecutive days, he got thrown out and I got thrown out by the robot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it, it, it just a rough strike zone when they first introduced it. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, that track, man, it reads funny. It, it's different. And, uh, you know, there are times you get guys with so much spin and their balls move so much the the, the track man reads it as a different pitch right. and uh, it would throw off the the calibrations of how that thing read balls and strikes so yeah i mean it I, was I, tough. I, I, i'm a i'm a technology fan and i'm not an umpire fan sometimes obviously being a pitcher you know <laughs> it's hard right. to like um, you know some days you got a good umpire uh -huh. some days you don't have a good umpire but they I don't know how they're going to – I don't know how you get around not having a human umpire. Right? That just seems like the, the that might be the one thing where we got to draw the line and just say, okay, we're going to have to put up with it. Uh, yeah. But I, 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 got... I think, it, you know, and I'll say it to you this way. It's funny. The guys got used to it, right? The players oh, got yeah. used to it. The zones, and they were different based on where the, the track man was and things. But the fans didn't like it. Because now they couldn't argue with the umpire, right? <laughs> I think part of a fan, fan experience is to be able to come out and tell the umpire he stinks or see the manager right. get tossed. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and that elim almost eliminated it. It really did. It, it was, you know, and it you have an umpire standing back there and all he does is hear it in his ear and that was a strike or that's a ball. Oh, wow. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, uh -huh. I wondered how they pulled it off. I didn't know if they had the, an actual machine back there or 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 what's going on. <laughs> yeah, no. So they, the, you know, the track man is kind of like a Doppler radar way it works, and it has these in the behind up on the stadium, and they had a Bluetooth, and it would read the pitch to a computer, and somebody would press the button of what the it said it was, and it would Bluetooth a call to the umpire. Wow. Wow, how far have you come? Yeah, that's a trip. What's that? I said, how far we've come? Yeah, it, it was. Nope. A, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it's crazy that it could do that, and and I love having the track man and the rap soto because of what it brings to pitching. And man, I can get so much movement, and I can redesign these pitches, and maybe something mechanically, but having them run the game, ooh, it's different. It's way different. 
Right. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so you were you were with the Atlantic League and are you still there? You kind of you moved on from there or what? Yeah, so um I did about seven or eight years there, still doing some stuff, you know, through the pirates actually. A uh, good friend of mine brought me in and introduced me to a guy named Tyrone Brooks there. Um and Tyrone was he's now with MLB. Um he yeah, works okay. in there in charge of diversity and stuff for them. I've met him before, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he had me basically I worked and helped them sign guys out of independent leagues. Um so I still do some stuff for them. Um if somebody else asks me, I'll go cover games or, or mm -hmm. whatever here in the Atlanta area. But I came back to Atlanta. COVID obviously there wasn't a season. Um I got into travel ball again and enjoyed it. Um did a program near my house for four years and was just coaching. Um, then coach, the head coach at the college I met now, he and I saw each other at a showcase. He asked me to help come on board because I guess he felt there was some value in that recruiting wise. We like to be able to tell our guys, we can get you to pro ball. A lot of those guys are going to go play independent ball, um, at different levels. And that's what we've been able to do the last three years is while we are able to move them to some to organizations majority of our guys and we get all our seniors a place to play and they get a chance to check a box if nothing else and say they played professionally and yeah. play independent ball yeah yeah well that's and, uh, that's one of the things yeah, i'm trying to focus on here man is just trying to you know enlighten guys to the fact that you know there's a lot of different pathways to to get to where you might want to go to a b you know you're probably not going to make it to be honest with you i mean you know 2% of guys right. are going to make yeah. it, right? Uh, and C, right. once you're done, there's a lot of different things you can do to stay in baseball if you want to do that, right? And so, you know, right. listening to what you, your your journey's been, you know, obviously you're an example of that. And that's, that you know, it's really cool to hear and see, you know, the different ways that you can yeah. stay attached to it, right? So, yeah. I mean, there's so many ways. And, you know, I, I got lucky a few years back. I signed a guy. His name was Josh Smoker. Um, with the Mets, and he ended up going from nobody wanting him to playing in the big leagues in a World Series in one year, um, yeah. and 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 getting that name under my belt was was big. Mm -hmm. And I did nothing, you know. Josh did all the work. I just made a phone call, right? Um, and it has it has helped keep me in the game. Um, yeah. And I will be in the game forever. I, you know, I help here at Tennessee as much as I can with Coach Vitello. I try and send him any high school guy that I believe can help him win a championship at Tennessee. Um, you know, any way I can stay in and, and be involved. I mean, I work at a college right now, but we're going to recruit guys that go in the portal out of Tennessee. So I need, you know, him to be able to back me up too and help me with those guys. Right. So it's, it's funny that the circles you run in for baseball and, you know, again, I'm trying to help kids play and get better and, learn in life and and maybe give them an opportunity to make the big leagues or even just play professionally um, and teach them, you know, some of the experiences and stories I've had playing um, yeah. um, or coaching and and so they can get a good feel of it. And, you know, in the end, that's what it's about. And I'll stay in it as long as I can to do that, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, what, so like – Part of what I, I, I like to help do is is really kind of help kids or not kids, just people in high school too, you know, college guys with the mental side of the game, you know, and, and, and you know, what what are some of the things like, did you ever come into any pitfalls in your life where, you know, what did you get help to dig out or what have you seen over your years sure. coaching to, that, that you could pass on or, you know, think about? Right. I mean, we all have them as a player, right? I mean, I got released three times. You know, we all have those downfalls of, oh, Lord, my career's over. Um, what do I do? You know, where do I go from here? And, um, you know, when I when I told the Padres we're going back to Atlanta, you know, the scouting director was not exactly friendly about it and m made it clear to other teams, hey, this guy quit on me. You know, oh, wow. sometimes you get out. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get outside that baseball circle and it can be hard to get back in. Um, yeah. I had to work really hard to get back in, you know, I had to take a lot of part-time jobs. I had to coach at high school 
you know, had to do travel ball um, while not really getting paid to be a scout, just doing it to help out and, and just get my name back out there in a, in a manner that, you know, got beyond what that guy thought. Um, you know, family also comes into play. We had a son, he's my son, freshman at LSU now getting ready to be a sophomore. Um, you know, baseball is not the most friendly business when it comes to family. You spend more time with other people's kids and on the road than you do your own. And, you know, you have to have a real understanding wife and, and somebody who enjoys traveling. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it can be difficult. So, you know, mentally it can wear on you and stress you out. Um, you know, it's just always having that drive of wanting to help people or wanting to keep people who are passionate about the game involved in the game. Um, for me, it was just, you know, I wanted to be involved. I love the game. I'm, I'm a lifer. I've said yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll always be involved in the game to the day I fall over, but, um, <laughs> I just, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things. And, you know, we use it a lot. You'd be surprised even at the pro level, they all have mental coaches. Now they have support yeah. systems for it. I think they have finally gotten on board. You know, I think when we played, when you and I played and you went into pro ball and you got released, it was, you got released, figured out, you know, yeah. there wasn't yeah. a lot of support. Yeah. Um, what do I do now? How do I get back to college? How do I, you know, what careers can I do? And I think MLB is doing a lot better job of that recently. Um, yeah. you know, even with the guys involved in the teams that have a lot of the anxiety and the ADHD and the things that, that give them their stresses in season, you know, they're putting a coach with every team to, to help, help with that. And mm -hmm. we do our, our coach at our college is big on mental, you know, breathing and meditation and slowing down. And, um, you know, a lot of those things, character, I think the college level, it looks on the field like they're jawing and talking a lot of trash, but I think for the most part, they do a pretty good job of, of helping these kids understand that goal now and not just your job here is to play baseball, not get a degree, not do that. You know, I think yeah. there was always a mentality of that at a lot of power five schools that now it's, Hey, we want you to get the degree. We want you to understand this. We want you to have a life beyond baseball. Um, yeah. And, well, then, you know, mentally, it can be a drain. I I can tell you, I, there are days where I just, hey, today I'm going out on the lake in our neighborhood and I'm going to fish and I am not taking a phone, <laughs> nothing. I don't well, want to talk baseball, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to yeah. have those days, man. You got to have the days where you unplug yeah. and you step away and, and just detach from everything. I know for you, it's fishing. I've seen, I've seen your videos and, and, and pictures and stuff. I know you love that. For me, it's hiking and, and getting out in the yeah. woods. Uh, and, and, you know, for, for, for schools, I think it's beneficial for them to make sure that they take care of that now because it just, it, you know, back when we played, we, there wasn't a whole lot of support. You know, like you said, I got released from the, yeah. from the Braves, and the only thing they asked me was, do you want to fly home or do you want to drive home? Uh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. And so, you yeah, know. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think this today, if you can, if you can introduce the players to everything and un have them understand, you know, the, the track a little bit more, uh, and then also, you know, help them mentally, psychically, uh, it, it's, it's only beneficial to the team. It's only beneficial to the university because eventually that kid's going to go somewhere and represent that, that, that school right. one way yep. or the other, whether it's in the corporate world or whether it's in the baseball world or whatever. Right. So. You know, I, I'm glad to see that there's a little bit more, uh, you know, understanding for that. I mean, I think sometimes it does get overblown a little bit. I think there's a little too much of that, you know, because, you yeah. know, I, I try to stress the fact that, you know, sports basically rewards those who fail the least. Right. So so right. you're, you're going right. to fail. You know, you, if you hit the ball three out of 10 times, you're an all star. So, you know, those right. seven yeah. times is what do you how do you handle those seven times you don't hit the ball? Right. And then. And yep. so I think that's really important. And, and you know, I, you can't stress that enough because there's nothing worse than than getting starting that inner critic and that inner critic really starts to take hold. And then, you know, then you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hey, I've got to get back in here and change and cool, man. game. And, yep. 
everything but no i appreciate it yeah yeah no i appreciate your time man we'll uh we'll catch up again some other time uh, sounds good good yeah. luck good luck today man and appreciate it thanks yeah we'll talk yep. soon paul uh, see you man yep. see ya